Democrat, it's not a male and female, it's, it's identifying as a civilized nation, as a nation of brotherhood, right? Because we ultimately are brothers, whether you, which way or not, we live together, we eat together, we pray together, we pass each other in the streets, we marry each other, we love one another, we, we're in this together, right? And we have to learn to identify those groups who are disproportionately vulnerable. That's the conversation we're having. Not who deserves it, who doesn't deserve it, who didn't give a fair shake, because every one of us would look to use whatever resource that we had or ability that we had within our own faculties and capabilities to empower, to somehow give our the people we love advantages that we that may have not had. And we all start from a different place on the board, right? No excuses, but we all have a different deck of cards. I've met all sorts of people. I've met people who made me feel like, gosh, I got a lot to learn. I've made, met a lot of people who I felt that I could impart things on. It didn't make me better than them. They still had the same core basic, whether they were living in the Waldorf Astoria or on the street, they still had the same basic needs and wants to mean something to someone else, to have an impact on others, to be able to sustain oneself, protect oneself. And then once you, you get that ability, then you try to increase that level of comfort to the people you love and then ultimately by the grace of the most high to have an impact positively on the world you know so these people you know these people are not were not qualified to me because one was a millionaire and one was a pauper you know we all admire those things that we may not have if, if you brought me to your house tomorrow and when you had a I don't even know what the new cars are. When I was growing up, it was a Lamborghini. I would probably be really impressed. I can't say that I would, I, I would want to be a friend because of it, but I would be impressed. I wouldn't feel any worse about my situation. I would be happy for you. you know, so you know, think about, about the people who are, are vulnerable. As a civilized society, we should think about that. We we'll Think about that, you know? There are people crying out. There are women who are being mistreated. The Me Too movement. African American males like myself had to scream out to the country that our lives matter. If we, I want you to think about that. And I think people are thinking about that. That we felt that we had to say that. And then I understand when people say, oh, well, you know, all lives matter. Yes, but you didn't have to say that because your life mattered and our lives didn't, right? That's the point that they miss, right? So if, if you came to my house and you had to tell me, hey, I count two, I'd be like, wow, I must have really poor hospitality because we all are okay, but you didn't get that same effect. We have a responsibility, right? When numbers are disparate, when people are incarcerated because they don't have $100 to pay bail. But if someone has, you know, the right sort of counsel, it's a different experience. That is that the America that we envision? An America of privilege? Is that what we've come, come to? These are the th things that we've learned to live with. We live with the idea that your experience may be a little different that, you know, if, if I walk into a store as a male, as a black male, then I'm not always looked upon as a, as a patron. And then you, and, and, and you don't make a big deal of it. You sort of learn to live with it, right? You know, you kind of make yourself, you know, so unassuming, so easily approachable that you can become this laughable version of yourself, Paul Lawrence Dunbar say, we wear, we wear the mask that grins and lies, it hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. 
you, know, you kind of dumb it down, and then you, and then it's the funny thing is that you, you even live with the same discrimination from your own people because if you're a little bit too articulate, or if you talk about it a little bit too, then you know you might think people think you think you're something different, so you kind of dumb it down, you know. So you're always kind of given, you know. I've walked down an aisle, and a woman is walking down the aisle, and walk down uh, the street, and you know, a woman, you know, and she may respond, but then I also say, hey, well, I would probably respond the same way if we would. So you know, you you, you kind of make yourself unassuming because you know these things happen. You you see where cops are disproportionately, inappropriately, just over the top. You know, you kind of learn to live with it. You know, when I was growing up, our parents just sort of tried to teach us how to avoid it. Like, the, 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 what they told us, like, look, this is just the way life is, right? You're going to have to work harder at anything that you want to do if you want to to uh, to achieve it. Hey, I can't say that we, we follow what they told us, right? Right? But, you know, you don't have any special connections. You don't have any of this. You don't have any of that. And then you're all automatically looked at as, as a criminal. You know, that was kind of the reality that, that you lived. But you know what? You didn't trip. I didn't trip. I went to college. You know, I had friends of all sorts of nationalities, black, white. You know, you know I married the second time. I, you know, the first time I married a, a beautiful black woman. The second time I married a beautiful white woman. I probably never thought that I would say that. <laughs> but, you know, these are the things that we learn to live with, right? I, I, I've, I've been around family members who tried to have the conversation with you, right? And you know what I'm talking about, you know? You know what I'm talking about. These are the things that we learn to live with, you know what I mean? But I didn't, you know, I didn't judge people like that. And I tell you what, not because I'm any better. Just kind of my experience was a little different. Like, again, I'm still jaded by the decade that I grew up in, the people that I interacted with, the choices I made. But it's funny because, I, you know, I went to school with black and white kids. You know what I mean? It was like, at least when we was young, it was nothing. Because we didn't really know the difference, Right. We just sort of learned the difference as we grew up watching TV and the things that was expected. And I was like, oh, wow, okay, it's like that. You know what I mean? I know the, the years I even played into it. I was like, wow, okay, so this is what's expected, right? How can I use that to my advantage? You know what I mean? You kind of you try to do that, but these are the third things that we learn to live with, right? The inequalities, right? And... Um, it's not subtle when people's lives are being taken. It's not subtle when a man pay. I mean, I don't, it's no way I can say it any better than anyone says, but it hurt my heart, everyone's hearts, to see a man beg for his life. I mean, how could you be so cruel? How can, we're not talking about law enforcement, we're just talking about people, because how could you be so cruel to, know, to hear someone in pain just not stop? It's something almost unfathomable to civilized people, right? And it wouldn't matter, just like I said in the beginning, if that was someone hurting someone who was vulnerable, who was a, a female. If someone who was hurting someone vulnerable who was a child. If someone who was hurting someone vulnerable who was of a different nationality. It's whoever is vulnerable, right, at that time. We have a responsibility as civilized people, and especially as people who claim to believe in God, who, play, who claim to believe in a higher power. You know, how can we not seek to empower the vulnerable? It's not going to bring your... If, my, if I go out tomorrow and I win a million dollars, it doesn't bring down your net. If you, if you were very successful and organized and you had a great career, when I go to your house, I'm not like, oh, man, eating my heart out. I'm sorry. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people are like, hey, that's your, your lack of ambition. But I promise you, 
Now, I may see something that you do and say, oh, man, that's cool. I want to try that. I want to incorporate it. But I, and we're not in competition. We're in relationship, right? Because you can literally do whatever you want. Whatever you want to do, you can do with your life anyway, right? So we're not in competition. So don't worry about me. We're not good. <laughs> no, I'm not... You come up, you roll up in the bins tomorrow. I'm, I'm hey, I'm like, whoa. And I'm going to be like, wow. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to congratulate you to the point that you feel uncomfortable because you're going, man, this dude's not supposed to be this happy for me. Because it doesn't, the only thing it can do is enhance my experience. It doesn't, I, you know, I, I've experienced things that are very awesome and God willing, they're going to be more, but we're not in competition. So in essence, we, we should be in competition to be in service to others. We should be in competition to build each other up. We should be in competition to see who can be a better relationship builder, who can be a better bridge builder. And trust me, I know relationships are not easy. Trust me. When I look at relationships, a lot of the time they make sense in theory. And I love people in theory. But when you attach expectations to those uh, to those thoughts, that's when you be you know everyone gets dissatisfied. You know what I mean? And inherently, you you expected me to do X Y Z, but I did A B C, and you're like, oh man, that's wild. And then hey, I expected you to do. You gave me the impression you were gonna do one, two, three, but you did four, five, six. Oh man, that dude is just horrible. You see what I'm saying? So, the, so I, trust me, we all know unity is great because we feel it, right? You know, when we're in unity, when we're in, in accord, when the, when the country is doing well and everybody's prospering and everyone's getting along and people may think that's corny, right? That's not rock. That's not the, the thrill that you wanted. It's not viral, right? But when everybody's doing good, you feel it. You feel it. And when people are at odds, you feel it too. We're in the middle of a pandemic and people are losing their lives because people don't have respect for other people's lives. Because people pursue, feel like you have the right to pursue with Ahmaud Arbery. May he rest in peace. They said that before he was shot, he was trying to evade these people, which we just so happened to see because they decided to take it, Right. Think about how horroring that was. What 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 were they really going to do with that tape, right? And they struck him with the car. So here's this man trying, you know, they had cut him off before and they hit him again. He's like, man, I can't run no more. And he's just trying to fight for his life and the dude gets murdered and he turns him over and, and, and calls him a nigga. Anybody that's vulnerable, it's not us against them. I would like to believe, I would hope that if I was a Caucasian male, that I would be saying the same thing. Like, it's not me against you. I was talking to a person, uh, one of my customers, and he said, man, he said, I got to really tell you, he said, I'm, he said I, I am a Caucasian male. I live in Silicon Valley. And I, I'll be honest, he said, because of the things that I do and the people I encounter, if you asked me a few months ago, I would say that racism, you know, there's, I don't see any racism in Silicon Valley. And he said, boy, was I wrong. And then he said, he said, man, I don't know, I guess it was my white privilege. And I was just listening to him like, you know, you got respect for that. Because look, I can have the same, I can say the same thing. I can say that, hey, you know, I, I, I must not have given people of other races a fair shot because of things that I have been acculturated to, to and taught. All of it could not have been right. It's not. You know, you know, like this, you know, learning, spending, spending my time with people of different, you know, Italian people, you know, and not just because it's not just black and white. You know, you have black people from France and they're French, right? You have black people that are from the Congo, and they, and you see, see what I'm saying, or or a white person that maybe from you know what we call white, you know what I mean, which is so basic, from Spain, and he's he, and he's Spanish, 
But you know, then you might have, you know, see what I'm saying? Like, to, to break people down into black and white is so, so basic. It's so, so